Oh, it was great. Um, you know, getting in here, it's like, you know, a lot of people say the first day of school, except, uh, you know, you go into the first day of school and usually, you know, you have the same classmates that you would have, except, uh, you know, half your classmates are gone. You have a new half of classmates. So, um, you know, it's fun to get in here, see new faces, um, see the energy around the building of God, just, you know, coming in here ready to work. Um, so, you know, it's been exciting to get back in here and just be where we are. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you look at like week 14, I think, whatever that was, and, you know, going through the bye week, um, you know, that's when I was told then. And then um, from that point on, you know, it's kind of just going into the offseason, you know, myself, um, just, you know, taking it as, as you're the starter. And so, um, you know, it was just kind of throughout, you know, whatever it may have been throughout the offseason. Um, but, you know, that was my mindset from as soon as I stepped foot on the field for the first time um, down in New Orleans, um, was to just obviously take it and run with it. Coach said, uh, you know, the First year, the second year, the lead should be pretty good. They're expecting growth. And, um, you know, the fact that, you know, you stay in the same system should be helpful. Are those factors that uh, you're hoping will, will play in your favor here as you take over? Those are huge factors. You know, there, there's a very select few who get to say that they've had, a, you know, the same um, scheme, offense coordinator, head coach, whatever it may be, for multiple years in a row. Um, so for myself being one of those guys, I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, you know, going in here with, with Drew and these wide receivers and the centers and, you know, getting the run game down and getting, you know, the pass game, you know, as, as good as it needs to be with the receivers. Um, you know, from a mental standpoint, I think that's, you know, where you're going to see the next step and excel from. Coach, to kind of borrow your, uh, your school metaphor with new classmates, I don't know if that makes you like the new class president or whatever. How, how's life <laughs> different when you are the guy here during the offseason workouts? Is it setting an example? Is it motivating guys? How's it different? Yeah, it's it's a setting example. Um, it's being the voice, um, you know, being in that locker room, just, just being that guy that, you know, guys go to to maybe ask questions um, or, or whatever it may be. You know, i got a lot of guys that, are, you know, hit me up. Hey, when are we throwing? When are we doing this? Um, and just letting them know, just taking leadership, taking the initiative of um, when to be, where to be. Um, obviously, you know, we're not going through much install right now. Um, so so kind of just pushing them and bringing everyone together. Just, you know, right now we're just working on growing as, as, as culture, as – um, brothers and just trying to grow closer. Yeah, so, you know, you look at it and, you know, a lot of people say, okay, this is year two. Um, I was not in this position. We were not even here this time last year. Um, so, you know, a lot of us as rookies still look at this as, you know, we're still in a rookie year for the next two, three weeks. Um, whatever it may have been. And, and, you know, this was a rookie offseason. Um, so, you know, next offseason, you know, there are going to be things that you change and do better and, um, you know, go about differently. So, um, you know, I think it's just really just, you know, being in here and just being around the guys. Yeah, did you see, like, the difference right before you, like, being the back of, being behind Marcus and learning from him, and then once you, once they decide to make the change, make you the starter, did you see a difference in response to, like, from your teammates? Did you see a difference? No, I think, you know, throughout the entire season, uh, myself and Marcus, you know, try to do the, the best job as we can of being leaders on the team, obviously, as a quarterback. Um, you know, I don't think we did, you know, I think we were just working equal within each other, you know, wasn't stepping on each other's toes and everything. Um, so when that transition happened, you know, it was kind of, you know, seamless. Um, and the guys, you know, obviously being at the quarterback, they're going to gravitate to you. Um, so, you know, Marcus did a great job. And, you know, I, I think I do a great job of being a leader. And so, um, you know, just going out there, as long as you're doing what you need to do and executing, I think everything's going to be okay. What have your interactions with Taylor Heineke been like so far? Uh, yeah, so, you know, we've been throwing uh, this offseason for the past couple of weeks. So um, we've got to know each other real well. Um, you know, we've been in meetings for the past couple of days, just seeing where his head's at. Uh, you know, we'll get on the golf course here soon, so uh, we'll see what that game's like. Um, and I know Logan's been talking up a big game, too, uh, so I'm excited to see what, you know, who's the best in the room. Okay, so you anticipate, I'm assuming you are going to be the best one out there on the golf course. Is that what you're telling them? Logan claims he is right now. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the best, but I, I wouldn't say I'm the worst either. Taylor's obviously a guy who has a lot of experience. Marcus did, too, but how do you pick Taylor's brain now? Uh, you know, just, just seeing, you know, he's had a completely different, you know, career and just the way he went about his game. Um, and so, you know, it's just going to be interesting to hear his stories and hear how he's gone about things, um, both, you know, on the field and off the field, how he's handled things, you know, both, you know, his up and down roller coasters uh, of his game. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to get, you know, once we get into, you know, the really nitty gritty of it. You know, kind of your first rookie offseason almost, 
didn't really have that before. So how was it different for four years before being in the NFL? One more time. Just you talked about being a rookie off season. So how was it different this off season compared to your years just in college? Yeah, I mean in college, you know, some of us were fortunate enough to go deeper than others in, in college. Um, but you know, in college, you you get about two, maybe three weeks off, and then you're right back right when school starts. And you know, you're lifting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever it may be. You're in there. And then you got spring ball, um, and so you know, obviously in the NFL, you don't have any of that. You're on your own. Um, and so just getting. For me, it was just being around the guys. Um, so working out with a couple guys here down in the city, um, getting guys together to throw. Obviously, you know, once free agency starts and you got new guys, um, you got guys contacting you, you got to contact guys, um, and just trying to see where everyone's at all around the country, um, just to figure out, you know, a time and a place, hey, get together, maybe throw one time, maybe throw two times, um, or, or come back here and throw. So um, it's all on your own, obviously. So, you know, you got to put in the work by yourself. You got to be self-motivated. Um, and, you know, I think for obviously the first time, first offseason, I did pretty well. When you look back at the four games that, that you played, how much did you go back and rewatch some of that? What's, with hindsight, how much do you, what is maybe the one thing that you took from that? You're like, okay, I really picked up on that that I didn't have. Yeah, one thing uh, I would just say is just obviously progression. Um, you know, that's what you look for, not only, you know, game to game, but year in, year out. Um, it's just progress. Um, and, you know, not only as myself, but as a team. Um, and so, you know, we just – you go back and look at those four games and, you know, each game as, as, as myself, as a player, as an offense, um, I think we got better. Um, you know, it's obviously, you know, not where we want it to be at the end of the season. Um, but, you know, I think that we see that, you know, where we can be and, and what we can do. So I'm excited for the progress that we showed and, you know, hopefully we continue to have that progress going, moving throughout. You said progression. What for you, when you look back at it, was the area of progression that you saw the most in your own game? Take the team part of that, like yeah. I would just say settling down, um, just being comfortable with where you're at, um, you know, not getting too antsy, just being able to go in and, and make plays and not have to make too many plays, you know, by yourself. Uh, there's 10 other guys out there that are going to help you. Um, so just being able to go out there and just, you know, give what they're taking, or excuse me, take what they're giving you um, out there on the field. And I think, you know, once I settled down and saw that, um, that's kind of where we progress. in the offseason where Arthur or Terry or some combination communicated to you that, yeah, we see you as the 2023 guy, too, and that's how we're progressing this offseason. Did y'all have that conversation? Yeah, there was a conversation. I don't know at what point, you know, in the offseason. Um, but, you know, the, I know those guys trust me, Art and Terry. Um, and, and, you know, it's just been, they've, you know, they've told me that, that they trust me and, you know, that they see what I do out on the field. They see my leadership. Um, and, you know, they, that, that's what they want. And so, you know, I'm just going to keep continuing to be myself, be who I am, uh, be the leader I can be, and, and go out there and just keep proving myself. Just because I don't know how it works, do, do they work you into, like, did you know they're bringing Taylor, Taylor in? I mean, do they say, all right, we're going to bring in a guy, This is, but, but we don't want you to, we want you to understand kind of the pecking order, the way we see it? Do y'all Are you part of those conversations? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, first-year guy, you know, obviously not Tom Brady, not Aaron Rodgers, so I'm not – I'm not up there sitting in those meetings, um, but you know, the, you know, they tell you, you know, might bring a guy in, might not. You know, it always depends on you know what's going to happen. Like we said, you know, they said that they trusted in me, said they they saw potential in what I could be, um, and you know, that's all I needed to hear. There were, there were some for I guess months. It seemed like there were questions about whether they would try to trade for quarterback Lamar Jackson. Was the name was thrown out? Like, do you avoid that? Like, do people start asking you a lot about that when you're kind of sitting there being like, I think I'm the guy, but there's also all this outside talk? Like, how uh, do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, there's not too many people asking me that because, you know, I'm just with my family and there's the guys that I work with in the offseason. Uh, but, no, I can control what I can control. Um, you know, one of those things that, that's just obviously something that I can't control. Like I said, I'm not in those meetings. Uh, I'm not, you know, or the Mr. Blank who's the owner here. So I, I'm, not, I'm not the one making the calls, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, when they told me my role, you know, that's what I knew it was going to be, and I just took it and went with it. What was your perspective on seeing all those signings happening, not just Taylor, but, you know, all the additions, the veteran additions that were brought to this team? Oh, I think, you know, it's a great addition to our team. You know, like I said before, progress. Um, we always want to keep going up. And uh, I think, you know, that um, – you know, the guys that we added on this team throughout free agency, I think is really going to benefit us 
um, not only on the field, but off the field, in the locker room, just leadership roles too. Um, just going out there to be able to, you know, push some of these younger guys to lead some of these younger guys, maybe not rookies, uh, but, you know, some of the guys maybe still on the rookie contract, whatever, to just go out there um, and, and be great. Um, you know, some of these guys have came from successful teams, um, has been successful as individuals themselves. Um, so it's going to be huge for not only myself, obviously, but all of us. How different is the vibe now than when you came in last year? I know you're a lot more comfortable, just like around the team, all those people coming in, how the vibe maybe is different. Oh, I would say for myself, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's a completely different vibe. Obviously, like I said, 365 days ago, I was back in Louisville uh, getting ready for a draft, so I wasn't here then. Um, but, you know, it, it's a good vibe. You know, everyone's excited to be back here, ready to work. Um, everyone's, you know, just, just happy to be here. Just, you know, there's obviously no complaints. Everyone was ready to get back and, and just ready to go to work. Now, being with a team compared to this time last year when you had the draft, I mean, just like mentally, how does it feel different? Oh, I mean, it, it feels great. And, um, you know, from, for myself, I'm obviously from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we didn't have very many college, or excuse me, professional teams, obviously close in the area. So um, as a younger kid, you know, I would watch the draft for maybe like the first, you know, 10 picks, whatever it may be. And then, you know, it kind of really didn't mean much more to me other than I wanted to be there one day. Um, and then obviously you go to, you know, 365 days last year and uh, it was, okay, where am I going? What team am I going to, what city is it going to be? Um, and then now it's like, okay, who's going to help us? Like, and so it's, it's pretty cool to, you know, kind of be in that spot to, um, now it's seeing, okay, and these are the pieces of the puzzle. Here's what they're thinking upstairs, like, and how it's going to help. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, man, how, do you, how do you feel like with, uh, when you got the news that Chris and uh, Caleb were being brought back, like, to say, hey, these are the guys that we want to be around for the foreseeable future? Yeah, this smile on my face right here. Uh, no, those are two great guys, and they work their butts off every single day. Um, and it obviously showed on the field. Um, you know, all those guys up front obviously do a heck of a job, you know, game planning throughout the week. Um, you know, they obviously all got to work as one, so I know they, they gel really well. Um, and then, like I said, they just come in every single day, no complaints, uh, put in the work, put in the time, and obviously, you know, they got paid for it. How many of the offensive skill position guys, like you, Kyle, Trey, Tab, are all within like two or three years of each other? Is there some something that can help that? Or not help that, but rather, like, can that be a help, you think, for you guys versus – you know, sometimes teams have the quarterback who's 35. and the I mean, yeah, I think it can. I think it all depends on, you know, how the, the leader goes about it and, you know, how the other people respond to it. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think age really matters. I think as long as the guys are connecting, um, you know, no one's, you know, either pushing one way or another and, you know, got people biting back, that's kind of where you get in trouble. Um, but, you know, as long as everyone's on the same page, as long as everyone's trying to, you know, achieve a goal, um, I think it's all going to go pretty well. That were happening in the offseason, some of the speculation that was happening by media, uh, you know, I think media outside of this room, more like national media, the implication of that kind of was that, you know, there wasn't a quarterback for the Falcons or at least one that they would expect to be, you know, challenging for the division. Do you hear that at all, that message in the media? And like, does that put a chip on your shoulder at all coming into this year? Yeah, I have a TV in my house, so I do, I do see that um, sometimes. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it puts a chip on my shoulder, but, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, I can control what I can control. Um, I know at the end of the day I'm going to go out here and work um, and go out here and be the best player I can be, not only for myself but for my team as well. Can you take away from football for a second? Yesterday it was a big news in Atlanta with the possibility of having an NHL team come back. Um, do you like hockey? Do you watch hockey? And then just as sportsmen in Atlanta having another professional team, what could you be getting into? Uh, I, I actually did see that news as well. Um, I've been to one hockey game. Uh, I think it was a, uh, a Rangers versus the Devils up there up in New York. Um, and so I, I've been up there. I've been to one hockey game. Uh, no, but I think it would obviously be huge. You know, we have the Brave. We have the Hawks right now in the playoffs. The Braves are obviously hot. Um, you know, um, I think, you know, bringing a hockey team to Atlanta, it obviously, you know, how about the city? I think, you know, you saw the designs of, of what the area down there could be. It was beautiful and everything. Uh, so, you know, more attention, why not? You talked about uh, throwing this offseason with your teammates. Who were you able to, to work with and throw, and kind of where were you guys doing that this offseason? Yeah, I won't name all the guys just because, you know, there's guys who here and there. Um, but just know it's it a good group of guys. Um, you know, we were down more so in the, the Brookhaven area, um, just working out, um, just building the connection. You know, it wasn't, you know, we had an offseason meeting with myself and Rags. It wasn't more so, you know, go out there and, um, you know, you still work fundamentals and everything, but, you know, with my trainer, Jordan Palmer, as so as more as it was, you know, get out there and work with your guys, grow a connection with the guys, 
Um, so that's something I took to heart. Like I said, when we had free agency coming left and right and guys, you know, I'm trying to figure out where guys are going to be at, uh, if I can get to them, if they can get to me, whether it's for a day or whether it's for a week. Um, just being able to throw with all the different guys that came through. What do you think the expectations for this team should be? Uh, obviously, we want to go out there. We want to win the division, obviously, number one. Um, and then number two, obviously, is go out there and win a Super Bowl. I mean, that's what every team is out here uh, preparing to do, you know, coming through OTAs and camp and everything. Uh, but we want to go out there and we just want to get better. Like I said before, we want to progress in everything that we do, whether it's mentally, physically, as a team, emotionally, we want to progress. Uh, we, we never want to be complacent and stay where we're at. Um, and we obviously never want to go backwards. You mentioned like with the draft, kind of cool being on this side saying, hey, I wonder who's going to, you know, who can come in and help us the most. Do you follow it at all? Do you find yourself thinking, I could throw the ball, hand the ball to that guy or face that guy, you know, and uh, across the line of practice? Do you, do you pay attention? Do you think about those things? I mean, yeah, and then, you know, just as quickly as, as you pay attention and think about them, you put yourself in the position of last year. Uh, where, you know, you saw mock drafts out the window and this and that. So uh, you take it with a grain of salt and kind of just, uh, you know, give a quick glance and a picture about it and then kind of move on to the next thing. Uh, but, no, obviously it is interesting to see, you know, what's out there and who people think and what everyone thinks and what people think we should do and this and that. So uh, it'll be fun come draft night. Chris, uh, so we had top three picks. Uh, uh, you've got the deal. What was it like? Uh, you know, knowing that you're going to be here for an extended period now and uh, to get the, the um, big, hefty contract there. Uh, just incredibly grateful, um, super appreciative of it, and um, that was the biggest takeaway. So I just celebrated with my family, but then know that that, you know, comes with a bunch of responsibility. Um, so I'm ready, ready to go. But again, super grateful, thankful. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's life changing for my whole family. So. Incredibly grateful to uh, the staff and Mr. Blank. And getting back in here uh, yesterday in the off-season program, what has that been like? And what are some of the early goals and objectives as we move into this off-season? Yeah, the the longer I've been here, the quicker the turnaround feels. But it's uh, it was fun. You get to you get to like the middle of March, and you just want to kind of get back. You kind of feel lost. You miss the guys. Want to get out there and practice. So it was it's really fun. And this phase one is to really, or at least the you know my mindset towards it is to. Uh, you know, focus on individual development, strength and conditioning, and then better understanding um, of the playbook as this OTA goes, and really kind of work the mental and small uh, technical details um, during this time. And really, uh, another huge aspect of it too is to grow relationships um, with your teammates. So, especially new guys in the room, um, guys on the team, and can just continue to work that. Thank you, Chris. When you, when you talk about being one of the pay, highest paid offensive linemen in the league. Like, I want to take you back to like when you first came in as a rookie. Did you see yourself being here? Or was that, was that a goal of yours to be good enough to be able to be paid in that manner? Um, I think you, or at least the mindset that, you know, guys have told me and the way I try and do everything is, you know, take everything day by day. And so like uh, you dream of playing, you know, your high school football player, you dream of playing college. And then you get a college offer and you're just incredibly grateful for it. Um, then your goals shift and you're like, you know, I want to, you know, be a starter in college. You know, you get that, play your career. And my dream has always been to be in, in the NFL. Um, and then through that combine process, you know, you just take everything step by step. So it was like, you know, combine was is getting the best shape I can to run. And then you go to um, the next next phase of it. And so when you get drafted, um, you know, there's expectations of you know what what's expected of you but you really can't focus on that and so really what I w always tried to focus on was make sure that the guys in the room really uh offensive line room first and then you know the team overall knew that I was being the most prepared I could be and giving it my best effort every single day that I stepped foot in here and so um I don't think really anything else like that changes but just know um the, kind of the same thing applies how have you how, are they, how did you feel when you found out Kalen McGarry was going to be around for a few more years? Uh, you know, that's my guy. Um, it's uh, I'm incredibly grateful and lucky, really, that to play next to a guy for four years and then, you know, for both of us to be able to be re-signed um, is huge. You know, we have a great off-the-field relationship, but our on-the-field, you know, professional um, relationship is huge, too, because you work with the same person every day. Um, you have a feel for communication for one another. You know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, and I feel like we really have that. And, and so 
just really lucky to be able to continue to work that. But it felt like the draft all over again where I was fortunate enough to get signed. Um, and then I'm just kind of waiting for my guy. I wanted the best thing for him. And so when he came back, I was, I was really, really excited. Oh, no. when you got, who, who got back to who first when, uh, when we all got the contract? Uh, I, I just gave him – well, he texted me. And then, you know, I don't want to – you know, he's going through it. I didn't really want to bother him. Or, um, but I was just checking in on him as a friend. Um, and then I was super excited for him, gave him a call the next day, let him celebrate with his family. So, Desmond is going to be the starter. How does that maybe change what this offseason looks like for you guys in terms of prep versus maybe the unknown or, or, or not or having a guy that you weren't familiar with? Um, you know, Des, Des was incredible last year and his way that he approached everything. And then now, um, super excited for the opportunity that he has but his communication leadership and like command in the huddle um, as an offensive lineman is something that we know that he brings every day um, and so just kind of what I said earlier the, the the great part about these OTAs is really to be able to develop that relationship and really um, even the small things of his tone of voice and tiny, timing up his tone of voice and like how he's going to do different um, different things is really important as an offensive lineman. So um, it's it's going to be really fun to work on those small things. When you look back at the four-game stretch that he was a starter last year, what was your biggest impression or what was the biggest impression he made in those games that give you guys confidence that he can be the guy going forward? Yeah, I mean, he had four games and four opportunities where those were, you know, really competitive games. And um, to go on the road in your first game is, you know, that's hard. Um, and the, you know, especially in New Orleans, that's a really tough environment. And like I said, the, the command and presence he had in the huddle, it was, was, was awesome. And, um, his ability to communicate, and that's all you can really ask for as an offensive lineman is if he's communicating what he wants or what he thinks and what he sees, um, to us, then it's our job to go out and execute. And, um, he does a great job. He's a great teammate, great guy. You guys know that. So, um, just, you know, continue to work those small things, this OTAs. Last year, the offensive line of the unit really kind of elevated from two years ago and helped establish the identity of the team, really. What is the kind of objective for the unit overall going into next year? Where, where do you feel like you can build upon from last year? We just, you know, we got to keep getting better. Um, you know, obviously, we don't want the quarterback getting hit. Uh, and so that starts at a fundamental standpoint of, you know, starting with myself and everybody improving the, you know, individual techniques, small things about it, and then to, the schematic points of now, um, it's all, you know, at least the guys up front, you know, it's a lot of us, it's our third year in the system. So we should all really have a great understanding and, and we definitely do of what the coaching staff's asking of us and then being able to problem solve um, in the game or in situations where things come up and be able to know and get ourselves in the right position. Um, and that's definitely the case. We're super lucky that everybody in our room really knows the standard of how we want to go about every day. Um, it's super fun. I mean, we have really, really awesome culture on our whole team, but in our O-line room, it's, uh, it's really special. And so it's guys who really love playing football, come out, work as hard as they can every day, and then um, play physical. So it's, it, it's, it's so much fun, and I'm really appreciative um, to be a part of it because it makes, makes the season fun. Up on that. Is there is there a bit of a different dynamic this year because there's more continuity on the offensive line going into next season? Because I remember on the, the first day of training camp, I think Arthur said that you know three of the five spots on the line were op up for grabs for you know open competition. And it seems like now some of those positions are a lot more settled this year. Does that change uh, anything for you guys as a group going in as you work to prepare for next season? I mean, Coach Smith always talks about competition drives everything, and so. Um, even you know myself, there's no, zero complacency with anything, and so we're just going out working every day. And but to just settle on what we did, it wasn't good enough. You know, we didn't make the playoffs, and we have obviously higher aspirations. So um, just to continue to work like that every day, um, and there's so many things to improve. You know, even Caleb and I, four years together, there's combination blocks we can improve. We can tighten stuff up. Um, there's things that, you know, improve individually, but then tying in with each other. And, uh, you know, Alex Mack kind of told me it's really, really boring being good at offensive line play because it's like the same things over and over and over again. And so, like, it's kind of repetitive, but, like, but that's, like, how you become um, better. So just working that small things, like just your hands, the same combination block. We have literally thousands of reps banked with each other. 
but hopefully bank thousands more to keep improving. Is it boring to you? Oh, no, 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 no. Just Yeah, no, no. In this offseason, outside the building, about the Falcons quarterback situation, is it going to be Desmond Ritter? Are they going to follow Lamar Jackson? Talk. How much attention, if any, do you pay to that? Do you keep an ear out? Do you cut an eye? Do you ignore it completely because you feel like you know what's going on? Uh, definitely ignore it completely. Um, obviously, my job is just to play right guard, you know, and you know whatever's asked of me is to play offense flying. So that's really all I'm consumed about, and it's like kind of funny because. I'll have family, like my immediate family knows like not to send me things, I don't know anything, but like you have like extended family will send you something, I'm like, yeah, it's great, I got it off of Schefter too, so it's just like, <laughs> like, you know, you don't uh, really, you know, pay attention to that stuff, um, you know, uh, you go in more of a friend role where you're just like really thankful if a guy leaves for your time together, but then also you're happy for them for their opportunities, and then, you know, like with Kayla back, I was super fortunate um, to have him come back, so um you're just you're really thankful and you know you're more of a friend there than really like looking into anything that being said uh when all these other signings were happening you know guys coming in these veteran you know people that they keep signing what's your perspective on that is that kind of like okay that's going to help us kind of continue and build this culture or what did you kind of think of some of those moves? uh there's guys you respect and admire you know um played david for four years and he's one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL in my opinion and somebody who's really uh, you know you don't hear his name out there that much but you know every guy who plays offensive line that played him was like you know you you got to be ready for that guy and you know Calais is I don't even know how many many years but he's still one of the top defensive linemen so um, it's really cool when you like respect and admire guys and then you see the way they play and you know that just from watching and then have those guys in the building is really cool Uh, your head spinning the first one you have no idea what's going on you're in a new city now it's like you know you are kinda comfortable you know how the process works and you can kinda just focus on anything like it slows it definitely it definitely slows down where you're trying to learn everybody's name in the building where now it's like you kinda know everybody you're not worried about that so um, just things kinda slow down I guess Chris, being the first guard to get a $100 million deal, what, what does that mean to you, especially knowing what it's going to mean for your peers moving forward? Uh, just super, super, super thankful. Um, and I'm thankful for the guys who came before me. There's so many um, guys who set the standard to build upon. And so I really hope that, you know, guys surpass it and guys, you know, continue to grow. And uh, it's good for the position, which is good for everybody. Um, so. Um, I'm super thankful. There's so many great players that came before me, and it kind of you just build and build and build off of that foundation. So I hope I get to be that someday for somebody else. Um, but it's it, it doesn't feel real most of the time, honestly. Um, but just again, super thankful, and I know the long-term impacts that it has. So thankful, really, to the to the staff and to Mr. Blank. So is it fair to say that you see yourself as a leader then for this offensive line, like that you see yourself as that guy? Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's like, you know, year four, I, lo I love the guys, love Jake. I mean, Jake's obviously the guy in our room, um, but I just try and – the way I kind of look at it is like and, – and, you know, Jake's my friend and really admire the way he does it. But he just came in every day quiet, working on his thing. And, like, the way he goes as a professional is the way he leads. And so that's kind of – I guess this is the way I'll try and do it. I'm not very vocal, um, but – in the same sense, like I just try and be, be the best professional I can be every day, and then you know, guys take whatever they want from it. But um, super excited, and then just in a support sense, I'm always there to support guys whenever, whenever they need anything. When we talk about Arthur Smith has uh, being a former offensive lineman. How do you feel like he's benefited you, if at all, not only being the head coach but also being a play caller as well? Uh, he definitely understands the position. Um, he understands the challenges that certain plays put us in. Um, you know, every play in the NFL, somebody's got a harder job than somebody else. And um, Coach understands that. He, he always trying to put us in, um, you know, as good a position as we possibly can. And so even if something bad happens or he kind of sees that during the week, he'll make an adjustment to always kind of protect us. And he tells us, too, he always trying to put, a, you know, put us first or look through our mindset. Um, which as a player you're super thankful for, and we have an unbelievable staff, really thankful. And I think you guys around the building every day know, like, there's true belief in everything that we do here. 
um, from players to coaches. So it's, it's, it's again, really thankful and love it. I mean, have you been able to have a, a big purchase, go on a trip, or do anything to celebrate uh, a little bit? Yeah, it, nothing, you know, everything changes, but nothing really changes. So I just, I vested everything. So uh, I bought a, I did buy a tractor. I bought a John Deere tractor for my house in, in the off season, a plow. So I'm kind of excited about that. But, uh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. We so, yeah, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> So like I would drive by a dealership in the off season all the time, and then like I told my like Maddie, my fiance, I was just like, you know, I, I definitely want one of these. She's like, yeah, okay, okay. And then I finally got the tracks. I was like, can I can I finally go? And she's like, yes, we'll go look. And like stopped it and looked, and um, they were they were super helpful. So I got it. I'm gonna plow this off season. That's like my fun thing to do is mow the lawn and plow. So it's like very very simple. So.